Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome back. Yeah, can you save my screen, everyone? Online guys. Can anyone confirm? Yes. 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 So yesterday we discussed about servers, right? Servers, server architecture, right? IP address types of sorry. Yeah. So what is uh, operating system? Types of operating systems, right? Yeah, today we are going to discuss about networks and uh, IP addresses, subnet masks, gateway, routers, load balancers, right? Yeah, so these are the things we are going to cover today. So these are the very basic things. If you understand this, you can easily understand cloud environments, okay? So these are the traditional, traditional infrastructure. So if you understand this, you can easily understand cloud environments. Right. So these are the very basic, basic things and uh, physical environments, local data centers, right? Local data center uh, resources. Fine. So we'll start with networking. Okay. Yeah. So basically, what is networking? Anyone? Anyone having an idea? What is networking? Network. What is network? Network and data Anyone? It's a communication between servers, right? Communication between devices which are hosted in the data center, right? Yeah, a computer network is a system in which multiple computers are connected to each other to share information and resources. See here. So this is a traditional network. Earlier, before, uh, like, uh, yeah, 10 years before, and five years before, we used to use uh, LAN connectivity. Currently, we are using Wi-Fi in real-time projects. But this is a traditional one by connecting LAN, local area network. So we used to connect all the servers, all the systems, and uh, we store the data in central location, say, share the sources, files, right? So we are using local area network. So this is a, a traditional network. So what are the characteristics of a computer network? What are the characteristics? Share resources from one computer to another computer. Create files and store them in one place, one computer. So access those files from other computers connected over the network, right? So central location. So developers, testers, DevOps leaders, everyone connect to servers. So centrally, so we show the data, we access the data. Next one. So connect a printer, scanner, or fax machine in, to one computer within the network. Within the network, let other computers of the network use the machines available over the network. Right? Yeah. So for example, one school, one school, one hospital. Right? So five floors are there in the school. So instead of connecting printers in every floor. What we will do, we configure, we connect one printer as a network printer. From any floor, we can print the documents, we can share the data, right? So due to this, what will happen? Costing will be reduced, right? So when we have networking, so instead of connecting uh, printers, scanners to the every floor, every system, we can configure as a network printer, network scanner, and we can print from any floor, any place, so that is that will work as a network device network printer, right yeah so hardware devices required to set up computer network network cables required distributors required routers required internal network cards and external network cards these are the components we required to set up computer network right <coughs> so network cables when we talk about cables Network cables are used to connect computers. The most commonly used cable is category 5, CAT5 cable. So most of the networks we are using category 5, category 6 also available currently. So CAT5 is the very popular cable. So in that CAT5 cable, color coding will be there. 
So based on the color coding, we can configure, we can connect to Plims and we can attach to our system, right? Our server. So this is category five cable, cat five. So when we buy any router along with the router, we get one cable, which is category five cable, right? Yeah, distributors. So a computer can be connected to another one via serial port, but if we need to connect many computers to produce a network, the serial connection will not work, right? So normally serial connections uh, we use for uh, loopback adapter, loopback, network to network, right? So device to device, we use that serial connections. So this is the serial connection. So if you have two networks, two small networks, if you want to establish connectivity between two networks, we use the serial ports, routers. So a router is a type of device which act as the central point among computers and other devices that are a part of the network. It is required, it is equipped with holes called ports. Computers and other devices are connected to a router using network cable. So nowadays routers comes with wireless port, right? So using which computers can be connected within, uh, without physical connectivity, physical cable connectivity, right? Yeah. So routers normally, most of the companies, most of the projects are using routers. Uh, to connect uh, servers, systems, laptops, right? So these are the wireless uh, routers. Network cards. So network card is a necessary component of a computer without which a computer cannot be connected over a network. So it is also known as the network adapter or network interface card, NIC. Most branded computers have network card pre-installed. So network cards are Two types internal and external network cards. So internal cards. So internal card is uh, like motherboard has a slot for internal network card where it to be installed. Internal network cards are two types in which the first type is peripheral component interconnect PCI connection, and uh, while the second type uses industry standard architecture ISA. Network, network cables are equipped to provide network access, right? So these are the internal network cards, two types of cards, right? So motherboard will have one slot, PCA slot. In that we insert one card, which is a PCA, a peripheral internet, peripheral connect, interconnect device, peripheral component interconnect, PCA card, right? This is a PCA card. So earlier we used to use this in uh, desktops. Desktops we used to connect these cards. Right. Yeah. Next one, external network cards. So external network cards are two types: wireless and yeah, USB cards. Wireless network cards need to be installed into the motherboard. So, however, network cables, network cable is required to connect to the network. So this is a wireless. So black one is wireless. Black one. So this is USB. So we know USB cards also we used to use right. Yeah, currently also USB cards we are using when we are traveling, we are using USB cards also, USB network cards. Fine. Yeah, so what are the important types of networks? So these are the very important. So these are the four types of important networks available. So PAN, LAN, WAN, MAN. Parcel area network, local area network, wide area network, metropolitan area network. So these are the four networks available. Let us go one by one. So what is PAN? It's a parcel area network. Parcel area network. So PAN is a computer network formed around a person. It generally consists of a computer, mobile, or a personal digital assistant. PAN can be used for establishing communication among these peripheral devices for connecting to a Digital network and the internet, right? So this is a pan. Normally, so when we are using laptop or desktop, so we use Wi-Fi keyboard, Wi-Fi, uh, not Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth headset, Bluetooth mic. So even the Bluetooth um, yeah, tab, uh, Bluetooth uh, phones, printers, scanners, right? You can use any Bluetooth one, right? So this is fine, but some disadvantages are there. Pan network is having some disadvantages. So this will work only 10 minutes, uh, 10 meters range, not 10 minutes, 
10 meters range within the room within the floor it will work right so within the floor you can use, you can use this so for example headset you connect right? within the floor you can you can use that so if you move to other floor or other place it will not work right yeah so characteristics of pan what are the characteristics it is mostly personal uh, devices network equipped within a limited area allows you to handle the interconnection of id devices at the surrounding of a single user pan includes mobile devices tablet and a laptop advantages so pan networks are relatively secure and safe it offers only short range solution up to 10 meters strictly strictly restricted to a smaller area disadvantages distance limits maximum 10 minutes only 10 meters only it will work 10 meters okay so what is a lan so pan we are not using uh, most of the devices are automatically we are enabling so lan is important lan connectivity is important so LAN stands for local network. It is a group of network devices that allows communication between various connected devices. It covers the smallest areas such as colleges, schools, hospitals, and so on. Right? So LAN connectivity still companies are using companies and uh, hospitals, schools, colleges, they are using LAN connectivity uh, to reduce the costing and also uh, to share the data across the uh, floors, across the building right yeah lan is completely private network see here this is the ethernet connectivity lan connections so desktop yeah whatever desktops or laptops or servers we have through lan connectivity local area network you can connect all the devices so characteristics of lan it is a private network completely private our own network that is our own network LAN operates at a relatively higher speed compared to other WAN systems. So when we talk about LAN, LAN is uh, relatively higher speed. For example, we have Wi-Fi router, right? So Wi-Fi router along with the router, we'll get, we get one cable. Router, router is Wi-Fi router. Along with that, we get, uh, we have one cable, right? So normally when we are trying to book any ticket, Ticket, right so by the time what we will do we connect cable because so the cable connectivity that is LAN connectivity is higher speed you can test it out so instead of using wi-fi if you connect cable relatively higher speed you can check it out okay yeah but every time you cannot connect right sometimes you can connect and you can use right so what are the advantages of LAN See here. So computer resources like hard disks, DVD, RAM, printers uh, can share local network. Uh, this significantly reduces the cost of hardware purchases. Right? So normally printers, as we discussed, printers, scanners, right? So we can configure as a network devices so that costing will be reduced. Data of all the all networks users can be stored in on a single hard disk of the server computer. It will be easy to manage data at one place, which makes data more secure, right? So every developer and tester, they connect to servers through network. They can develop the code, they can test the code on servers directly, right? So when we save the data in one place, that is most secure, right? Yeah, disadvantage of lab. So another is users can access critical data of an organization in case LAN admin is not able to secure centralized data repositories, right? So LAN admin is not capable, definitely hackers will end up, okay? So what is MAN? It's a metropolitan area network. It is, it most, it covers the largest area than LAN, such as small towns, cities, etc. MAN connects two or more computers that reside within the same or completely different cities. Yeah. So this is a bit, uh, yeah, compared with the LAN, it is a higher network. So geo people, geo network. So when geo started, they used to 
uh, they used to cut the road and they used to put the cables right yeah entire city different cities they installed geo cables right yeah so man is a metropolitan area network so here uh, most of the cables they use uh, fiber optic cables fiber optic which are very higher speed bit costlier right yeah so this is the man connectivity schools hospitals colleges factories right so normally we use man connectivity yeah so what are the characteristics it mostly covers towns and cities in a maximum 50, 50 kilometers range mostly used medium is optical fiber cables optical optical fiber is a bit costlier higher speed what are the advantages of man it offers fast communication using higher speed carriers like fiber optic cables it provides excellent support for an extensive size network and greater access to van right so a man network mostly includes some area sub city or entire city so this is a bit theoretical part don't uh, don't get bored okay so this uh, servers networks is a theoretical basic idea basic understand so once we start working on cloud practically we'll see all the services okay so this is basic understanding that is why so i am going uh, a bit faster fine right? so just basic idea so currently we are not using this man connectivity lan connectivity we are not using but if you understand this you can easily understand cloud environments yeah what are the disadvantages of man so here drawbacks right so you need more cables to establish man connection from one place to another so in man network is it is a thought to make the system secure from hackers right because uh, so distance when we have distance definitely yeah so this uh, maintaining uh, man connectivity is a bit difficult right so hackers we need to control hackers here yeah what is van it's a wide area network it covers a large area than lan and uh, as well as van such as country and continent etc so van is uh, expensive and should or might not be owned by one organization right so it is a country to country continent to continent that is why one organization they cannot bear the costing satellite medium is used for wide area network so normally we use satellite network right so this is a van connectivity so what are the characteristics so any organizations can form its global integrated network using van advantages van helps you to cover a larger geographical area therefore businesses offices situated at longer distance can easily communicate yeah so here van connections work using radio transmitters and receivers built in built into client devices disadvantages of van so the internal setup cost of investment is here right it is uh, difficult to maintain the van network so you need skilled technicians and network administrators uh, there are more errors issues because of the wide coverage and the use of different technologies normally so when we want to configure uh, lazy lines van connectivities we required skilled technicians and uh, it is a wide coverage right so so many errors issues we face here yeah. see here this is the combination of lan man van right yeah so these are the networking uh, types next one what is ip address ip address and anyone what is ip address anyone ip stands for internet protocol right yeah so an ip address is unique address that identify a device on the internet or a local network so which is the set of rules governing the form of uh, format of data sent via the internet or local network right so every system every server every device will have their unique address unique ip address for example so my laptop just open command prompt so if you check here ip config you get your ip address see here when i when i check ip config see here this is my 
ipv4 address ip version 4 currently we are using ip version 4 so maybe going forward ipv6 also will be used so this ipv6 currently we are not using but maybe going forward we use ipv6 also right so here two ips it is showing inside right here here this is one of the ip this is one more ip why it is showing two ips here Yeah, so when we connect the multiple routers, it will show you different router address. So this is a instant route, uh, instant, uh, this is currently connected router address, instant address, right? So this is instant router IP address. This is my home IP address. So that is why, so if you are connecting frequently, that will set the IP address, right? If you go to office, one more IP will be, right yeah so ip address subnet was gateway so what is ip address what is subnet mask what is gateway we'll see that so ip is a internet protocol so it is a unique address for every device okay what is subnet mask we'll see so types of ip addresses before going to subnets types of ip addresses what are the types available i will try to understand so there are various classifications of IP addresses and each category further contains some types here. First one, private IP address, private IP address. Second one is public IP address. In public IP, again, we'll be having two more IPs before going to other IPs. Uh, normally when we, are, when we connect any server or when we connect any the uh, network device or any server, desktop or laptop. Every server, every system, how many IPs will be there? Every system, any system, any laptop or desktop or server, how many IPs will be there? Anyone? Only one IP. Every system, every device will have only one IP. So which is network IP, right? But here they are showing two IP addresses, right? private IP, public IP, what is this? Every cloud server will have two IPs, private IP, public IP. So why we require private IP, public IP? Yeah, to connect our cloud server, we use public IP. To connect, to connect our server, we use public IP. Once we log in into the server, we use private IP. So this is for internal communication. Private IP is for internal communication. So public IP is for to connect our server okay so while working on cloud servers we'll see that so in public ips again we have two more ips first one is dynamic ip address second one is static ip address what is dynamic ip anyone all in guys what is dynamic ip keep on changing keep on changing right so dynamically the ip will be changed every time so dynamic dynamic ip address means so this ip will be changed dynamically every time every time when you restart your system when you stop start your system so ip will be changed okay so why the ip will be changed every time what are the importance here so because back end in data center there will be dhcp server dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol server will be there that will take back that old ip and it will give new ip whenever you restart your server that we will see practically okay so in cloud servers cloud environment practically we'll see that so dynamic ip means dynamically every time ip will be changed whenever you restart server right static ip what is static ip static ip is a private uh, permanent ip it is a permanent IP for your server. This, this will not be changed. Static IP will not be changed. This is the permanent IP until you defeat your server, terminate your server. IP will not be changed, right? So along with these two IPs, one more IP is there, which is a elastic IP. Dynamic IP, static IP, elastic IP. So that will be introduced to cloud. We'll see that. Okay. Yeah, so what is subnet? Anyone, what is subnet? 
subject content in anyone anyone having idea subject is in a range of ip address right subject is a sub network small network right subnet is a sub network small network so instead of a large network we can create sub network right why we require subnet why we require sub network for example so we have thousand server server in which uh, we have development servers qa servers and production servers so in production servers we have database servers also right so normally production servers database servers we don't allow inbound traffic inbound traffic will not allow inbound means instead of the access we don't allow right so when we use only one subnet for all the servers so we cannot control the traffic that is why we create sub networks subnets small networks in the thousand servers we can create three networks different networks 300 servers are development servers 300 servers are qa servers for and servers and products servers. so when we create sub network small network so sub network range will be different range will be changed so that will restrict the traffic right for example in this floor there is no rooms there is no partitions one class is going there one class is going here what will happen some disturbance right that is why we divide into rooms small rooms right so that we can control the noise right yeah. so a subnet or subnetwork is a smaller network instead of a large network see here so these are these small networks sub networks right so this is one big network instead of the big network we created small networks small networks so that what will happen we can control the traffic Okay. So here they are showing something like 200 dot 200 dot 10 dot 48 slash 29. What is slash 29? 200 dot 200 dot 10 dot 56 slash 29. Here 28, 28, 28. What is this? What is slash 28? I'll give you some example here. I'll give you some example. subnet ranges just search here subnet ranges see here so slash 29 slash 28 slash 50, uh, 27 like this right so why they are showing like this so these are the these are the ranges of your sub networks range of your sub network slash 29 means you can accommodate eight ip addresses you can connect eight systems to the range that range so normally in real time projects we use slash 24 and slash 16 these two ranges we use in real time projects slash 24 means in that sub network we can create 256 ip addresses in this sub network we can create 256 IP addresses, means 250 systems, servers, or laptops you can connect in the subnetwork. Right? So, slash 16 means 65,536 systems within the subnet. This we will go deep drive while working on cloud. Okay? So, these ranges are very important. So, currently, we don't require this range. We don't need to go deeper into this because so this will be taken care by cloud vendor, AWS vendor. In traditional networks, physical environments we used to take, we used to take care, right? So currently, cloud vendor is taking care of this. Okay. Next one, what is network switch? What is network switch? Right? A switch is a device in a network, computer network that connects other devices together. Multiple data cables are plugged into a switch to enable communication between different network devices. Okay. So this is a traditional switch. Okay, earlier we used to use. Yeah, so we used to connect all the LAN cables to the switch 
and we used to share the data we used to communicate between the uh, within the network from one system to other system right this is a traditional one currently we are not using this we are using different switches right so what is gateway so gateway when we talk about gateway gateway is a router right to communicate to two networks to communicate two networks you are using gateways see here so this is one network this is another network this network range is 10.0.0.0 slash 8 20.0.0.0 slash 8 so two different network ranges so when we have two ranges we cannot communicate right from one network to other network we cannot communicate so that is why what we will do we can use gateways gateway means router right to establish the communication between two networks, we use the gateways, routers. What is firewall? Firewall and end end? Anyone? What is firewall? Anyone having it? Firewalls are network system, network security systems. It is a layer, security layer, we can say security layer, right? So that prevent unauthorized access to a network. It can be a hardware or a software unit that filters the incoming outgoing traffic within the network. So firewalls will control the inbound and outbound traffic. Inbound means incoming, outbound means outgoing. See here. So normally when you want to connect your devices, your servers or any network, how can we connect? through network right through internet if you want to connect any devices for example if you want to connect your office network from your office laptop how can you connect through internet you connect to vpn and you can connect your from vpn you connect your you can connect your office network right so through internet we can connect our private network right so internet is the most vulnerable network most dangerous network Right, so many viruses, threats, malwares, right? So that is why. So here we use firewalls. Uh, for example, if I want to connect my office network, I connect through internet only, right? So yeah, office network will have one firewall. So firewall is a gateway. It is a security layer. So as per the firewall rules, it will work, right? So if any good traffic is coming, it will allow, it will accept. Good traffic, it will accept as for the firewall rules but if any bad traffic is coming it will block okay yeah so when we want to connect our office network through internet we can connect so firewalls will allow deny the traffic as for the firewall rules right yeah next one so what is replication failover and load balancer replication what is replication anyone replication Replication is nothing but synchronization, data synchronization, right? Yeah, see here. So replication is a technology for copying and uh, distributing data and a database object from one database to another, and then synchronizing between databases to maintain consistency and integrity of the data. In most cases, replication is a process of reproducing the data at the desired targets, for example. So in cloud, we we are going to uh, yeah we are going we will discuss on regions. In cloud, we'll discuss regions, zones. Region is nothing but data center. Zone is nothing but data center, right? So one region to other region, one zone to other region, other zone, data will be replicate, right? So why the data will be replicate? For example, one zone is down. We'll see that. See it. So this is the primary region, this is the secondary region. From one region to other region, data will be replicated like this. Right? Primary region to second region, data will be replicated. Right? So here, see here, three files are there, so the same three files replicated to secondary region. So one user is connected to the primary region, if the primary region is down, what will happen? Automatically, Secondary region will take care of the data, 
right? So the community, yeah, the data will not be lost if any one region is down, right? So if the primary region is down, data will not be lost. The users who are accessing from primary region, they can automatically switch to secondary region, right? That is nothing but failover and a replication, a replication. So load balancer will see while working on uh, cloud environments, what is the load balancer, we'll see that, okay? So this is a failover and replication. Any questions up to here, anyone? Anyone having any questions up to here? Next concept. So why Linux? Why Linux? So most of the data centers, most of the production servers we are using Linux only. Currently, we are using Linux only, right? Backend servers, all the servers we are using Linux only. So why Linux? What is the importance of Linux? We'll try to understand. Okay. Yeah, see here. So free and open source, right? Linux is free, open source, secure. So many distributions available. So distribution means so many different versions available, right? It's a it is power, very fast performance, right? So let's licensing cost is free, right? Open source means yeah, it is a openly available. So when we have open source, the kernel can be modified, backend kernel can be modified. Yeah, it is a secure. Compared to Windows, it is more secure, right? So many distributions available. It's a fast performance, right? Yeah, so here, no viruses, no malware, no slowdowns, no crashes, no costly repairs, right? So whenever a virus is releases, any virus released, that will be directly attacked to the Windows first, right? But Linux, very few, uh, Linux, most of the servers, we don't see any virus issues. Okay. So normally Windows systems sometimes it will get slowed down, but Linux systems will not be slowed down. Right? No crashes, no cost repairs. Linux servers will not be crashed. Right? Yeah. So these are the things available here. Any questions, anyone? Clear, right? So these are the networking and uh, IP addresses, subnet paths, gateway, router, load balancers. So very basic things, okay? Theoretically, you can understand. So while working on cloud, we'll go deep drive and we see practically all the services. Okay? Yeah, so these are the very basic things. Next one. So this is our AWS platform. This is our AWS cloud platform. So I just want to show you something here. I don't want to go through the services. Yeah, this is a cloud platform, AWS platform. So in our course, we are going through, we are going, we are going to learn three cloud platforms. Okay. AWS, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform. Three platforms will be covered. So why three platforms here? Why we require three platforms? One platform is enough, right? Because most of the companies, most of the positives, they are using at least two platforms. Okay. So AWS is, uh, yeah, it is a quality services. AWS is uh, bit quality services, bit costlier. Okay, compare it to Azure. This is AWS platform. So this is the Microsoft Azure. Okay, and uh, Google Cloud also we have. So this is Google Cloud platform.
Okay. So these are the three platforms you are going to learn. So all the platforms are same. AWS, Azure, GCP, other platforms also there. Nearly 25 platforms are there. Right. So all the platforms are same. Functionality wise. But terminology will be different. Terminology. So in AWS, network concepts we call it as VPC. Networking concept we call it as VPC, virtual private cloud. Right. In Azure, we'll call it as VNets, virtual networks. Right. So terminology will be different, but functionality wise, all the platforms are same. Okay. Yeah. So if you are good in driving, you can drive any vehicle, right? So the same way. So if you learn AWS, you can handle any fact. Right. So that is why you need to focus on AWS. So AWS, uh, yeah, in AWS will be covered 18 services yearly. Right. So every service will go deep drive. So if you understand AWS, you can easily understand Azure and Google Cloud. Right. So these are the three platforms you are going to cover. Yeah. Now, how to create AWS account? We'll try to understand. Okay. So meanwhile, from tomorrow onwards, we'll start working on AWS. So directly, we don't go to services. So we'll walk through the services. What are the services available? What are the regions? What are the zones? Uh, one by one, we'll walk through. Then slowly, slowly, we'll enter into servers, services. Okay. Yeah. How to create AWS account? We'll try to understand. So meanwhile, uh, you can create this account today, right? So if you want to create AWS account. AWS.amazon.com is the URL. AWS.amazon.com is the URL. Enter this. Yeah. So click on sign into the console. So I saved my credentials. That is why automatically log in, right? I just want to sign out here. Yeah. So when you give AWS.amazon.com, so you need to click on sign into the console. Now, see here. Create a new AWS account. Click on this. Yeah, see here. So this account is one year free. One year free, right? So within one year, you can use all the services, but limitations are there. This free tier, right? Free tier account. So we have limitations. Storage you can use 30 GB only maximum. Servers you can use 750 awards maximum. Right. And the elastic IP addresses, we can use five IP addresses only. We have cost. And also network, we can use some hours that I'll show you how many hours we need to use. Yeah. This account is one year free. Within that free services, we have to use. Right. So we don't get any bill so when we use free services. But if you use beyond the limit, you get some charges. OK. Yeah. So how to create account first, we'll try to understand. So here you can give your email address and account name, AWS account name. You can give your name. Click on verify email address. You will get one email to your email address. You need to check that. You, can, you need to validate that. So after that, go next, next, next. You need to provide your personal information, personal details, phone number, address, right? Go next, next, next. So end of the page will ask you to provide credit card details or debit card details. You need to provide bank account details. Okay. End of the page. So you need to provide your debit card or credit card details. Okay. So this will accept only SSA Bank, HDFC Bank, City Bank, Access Bank, SBI Bank, SBI Bank cards. So Andhra Bank, Syndicate Bank, Kendra Bank, those will not be accepted. Okay. So once you submit your account details, from your account, two rupees will be deducted. Only two rupees. That two rupees will be reverted after one week. Okay. Yeah. So annoyingly, they will not charge anything from your account. So, for example, you have 30 GB storage limit. You have utilized 30 GB. So after that, you have utilized one uh, 10 more GB. 40 GB utilized maximum. What will happen? Bill will be generated. 
you will get your you will get emails you will get emails okay so this is the bill generated please clear you will get emails so you need to reply that email like so i'm using only test labs i'm student i'm practicing could you please revert if you ask them they will make it as a zero okay but if you are not responding to that email what will happen they will not charge anything from your account they will not debit your uh, they will not debit from your account they will not charge anything what they will do they will suspend your account they will stop your account that's it annoyingly they will not charge anything so auto debits will not be happened they will not debit you from your account they will not debit okay suspend means your account will not work your head of this account will not work so after that what we can do? we can create one more account if required by using different email address nothing will be bad. okay but so to avoid that distractions we need to use properly so whenever you complete your practice you need to delete the resources you need to stop the servers so that the billing will not be happening. okay so we need to use properly the cloud resources so that you will not get any issues right yeah so this account you can create today if you if you are not understanding you have any confusions you can just google it how to create a blessing step by step you'll get all the steps right so today you can prepare you can create this account so once you create the account it will take 30, 30 to 45 minutes to activate right 30 to 45 minutes so after that uh, you can use the account and yeah so tomorrow onwards uh, we'll start working on cloud uh, what are the resources available So click on sign in. Once you create the account, www.amazon.com. Click on sign in. Yeah. So once you click on sign in, so here it is showing root user, I am user. What is root user? What is I am user? So root user is a primary user. This is our test lab, right? In test lab, we use root user only. Root user is a primary user. You are the owner of your account. That is why you can use root user. But real time projects, in real time projects, always we use I am user only. I am user. I am is a identity, identity access management. Identity and access management. So in real time projects, we always use I am account only. So I am account means your name, your account, right? So I am account, uh, we can restrict the users, we can control the users. We can give the permissions. But root is a primary account. Root is a simply can say administrator. Right? So admission will have full access. For example, so we are uh, 15 members, for example. We are you all are using a root user on root user only in real time projects. In real time projects, we are using root user only. So who is doing what? How can we identify? You are adding some servers. I'm building some servers, is modifying some servers, right? So who is doing what? How can we identify? So everyone using root user, we cannot identify, right? So you cannot control. That is why everyone will have IAM account in real-time projects from fresher to director's level, right? So everyone use IAM account only. So in that IAM account, we can apply the permissions to the users. If any fresher join into the project, we give limited access. If any architect join, we give full access like that. You can control the users by using I am account, I am user. So in real time projects, we use I am account only, but in test lab, we use root account. So we have I am service. In AWS, we have I am service. We'll go deeper. How to create a user, how to switch to user, how to apply permissions to user. We'll try to understand. Right? Yeah. So once you create the account, once account is activated, Select root user and give your email address. Click on next, give password. Yeah. 
this is my AWS console dashboard, uh, AWS dashboard, right? So here, these are the recently visited services. So all the services will go deep drive one by one. EC2, S3, IM, EFS, Glacier, S3 Glacier, VPC, right? So these are the services will go deep drive. And here we have, these are the data centers. We can say regions, regions, okay? So what is region? Region is your data center, right? So these are the cloud data centers, cloud data centers. See here, US East North Virginia, US East Ohio, US West North California, US West Oregon. These four are America's regions, America's data centers, right? So this is the Africa region, Cape Town. These are the Asia Pacific. So here we have Hong Kong, Jakarta, Mumbai, Oscar, Seoul, Singapore, Sydney, Tokyo. So we have Mumbai region also in India, Mumbai data center. Okay. Yeah, Canada region, Canada data center. So these are the Europe regions, Europe, Frankfurt, Ireland, London, Milan, Paris. Yeah, so these are the Europe regions. Even Middle East also we have, right? Bahrain, Middle East, UAE, South America also available. So these are all the AWS data centers, right? Across the globe, we have so many data centers available, right? So same way, Azure and Google Cloud also having data centers. So what is data center, anyone? Yesterday we discussed, day before yesterday. Server. It's a server room, right? Where we hold all the servers, right? It's a server room. These are the cloud data centers, AWS data centers. Right? So we'll go deep drive one by one. Tomorrow, uh, these services one by one will walk through. Once you understand that, slowly we'll enter into the services. How to create a server, how to connect server, how to integrate any tools with the server. Slowly, slowly, we'll enter into the cloud, we'll walk on cloud. Once uh, AWS, uh, yeah, if you are good in AWS, you can handle a new platform, right? So once complete the AWS, then we'll work on Linux and DevOps. Yeah, right. so we are we only have basic server. Ah, yes. But uh, you can also like uh, um, Linux administrator. So it is really related to Linux. Not right, right. We are not Linux admins, right? So Linux admins roles already gone. I am also Linux admin basically. Okay. So in 2010, I certified Linux certification. I am a Linux admin basically. But currently. No, no admins, right? No Windows admin, no Linux admin, no VMware admin, no storage admin. Admins already gone. We ever move to, we ever migrate to DevOps and Cloud, right? So they are surviving currently. So in our project, four years back, not four years, four and a half years back, 180 members team, team size is 180 members. Four years back, 180 team size, currently 25 members. Because no admins. So admin admin team says 30 members earlier. <coughs> Currently no admins. Right? So all everyone gone. Only DevOps engineers, cloud engineers. Okay. Yeah, so that is why. So we don't require any admin skills here. Okay, we are not admins, we are DevOps engineers. Right? Yeah, that is why whatever commands required, whatever Linux topics required. For a DevOps engineer, those will be covered. Okay. Any questions, anyone? So, anyone newly joined today? Can you can you please ping the I mean AWS uh, link for the beginner start? AWS link. Yeah. Yeah. AWS.amazon.com aws.amazon.com is the URL. Right? Yeah, so you can create account today, right? So from tomorrow onwards, we'll start working on AWS, right? 
So tomorrow we'll walk through the services first. Okay. So from day after tomorrow, we'll start working on services one by one. EC2, S3, IM, EFS. Here we have different services are there. We'll walk through all the services. What are the services we are going to cover with the, the services? We'll go deep. Okay. These are the head of the services. So anyone newly joined today, can you ping your uh, email address and WhatsApp number in the chat, go to meeting chat? Yeah, so every session, theoretically, practically, we'll work on that. Okay, so till now we just we completed theoretical parts, three demos and the basic sessions, servers, networks, right? So tomorrow onwards we'll enter into the cloud. Okay, yeah. So from tomorrow onwards you need to concentrate. From day after tomorrow onwards you have to bring your laptop if you want to practice in practice room, classroom things. Okay, yeah. From day after tomorrow onwards you need to practice daily basis. So daily you need to practice at least one and a half hour to two hours so that within two uh, within two months you can easily crack your internet. i'm guaranteeing right so you need to practice more right so topic wise uh, some session like uh, uh, practical sessions so we'll get uh, you will get video recording just uh, go through the video recording and you can note down the steps and you can practice okay so i'll share with you soft copy also documents also Okay, so whoever not clear the fee, uh, you can clear by today itself. Okay, so today also same link is allowed, but tomorrow onwards it will not be allowed. Okay, so whoever not clear the fee, make it by today. So classroom guys, online guys also, right? Yeah, tomorrow onwards. So strictly, our people will monitor. Fine. So once you clear the field, you can share the screenshot to me so that I'll add it to WhatsApp group. So in our group already, 24 members added in our group. So our batch is 65 batch, right? Already 24 members added. See it. This is our group, right? 65 batch. See it. 24 participants already added. So you can share the screenshot to me once you clear the fee so that I'll add into WhatsApp group. So in the group, you will get all the recordings, all the documents, everything, right? Yeah. If you are not clear the fee, make it by today and you can add it to WhatsApp. Group. Fine. So tomorrow, day after also, one hour session only. Right. So once uh, start working on AWS services, strictly one and a half hour, because we need to complete within two months. Right. Yeah. So we stop here today. So any questions, anyone? Any last question, anyone? 